All right, shoot, happy Thursday. It's already Thursday, damn, this week flew by. Uh, but today is the uh, higher level, more advanced level up coaching that we're gonna do. It is mute. There you go, I muted you. Uh, all right, guys. So today's uh, advanced uh, level up coaching, guys. Uh, full disclaimer before I get started. This is a little more advanced stuff. So it's really geared for agents who are up and running, already closing deals, already meeting with clients, stuff like that. This is a little more higher level kind of sales training. Um, but surely some of you guys that are brand new, I mean, you can start kind of learning about some of these concepts. But I do not want anybody to get confused if they're just brand new and still trying to book their first appointments, um, you got to graduate to this stuff. So I don't want it to kind of be over your head and, and stuff like that. Um, so I just want to make that disclaimer for these Thursday sessions. It's more of a higher level discussion, but it is open to everybody who is willing to learn. So let's kick it off with today's topic. So what we're going to talk about today, guys, um, on the training is uh, how to create, uh, let me rephrase that. How to increase your value proposition when you're meeting with clients with a more compelling offer. Who knows what value proposition means? Who can tell me what value proposition means? It's how you differentiate yourself from the uh, competition. Yes. How you differentiate yourself from the competition. Right. Yeah. See, we're meeting meeting their needs and understanding exactly what they have so when you are presenting it you're letting them know how it is meeting their needs so you're providing value because you're trying to get what they want or need exactly right you're figuring out people's needs and if you're someone that can satisfy those needs or satisfy the problems of the consumer you have more value right so every client that we work with whether they're buying or selling a home they have some sort of problem that they face, right? There's common problems, you know, or fears or problems or whatever it might be when you're buying a home. There's common things with selling a home as well. So we're going to talk about that today because the more that you can understand uh, value proposition and how to increase your proposition, your value proposition, it's going to lead to more conversion of deals in the long run, right? Because in the beginning, when you're first, when you're first getting started with, with real estate and you fully don't understand what makes you valuable and what makes buyers and sellers tick, what are some of the problems that they face and how you can meet those problems, a lot of times it's just sheer like hustle and energy and just trying to win people over by just being nice and being personable and stuff like that, right? And that's a great place to start, right? Being nice and being personable and being consistent and making the calls and showing up, that's the bare minimum, right? That's the foundation. But once you get to that level where you're doing that, then it becomes more and more about how much more efficient am I every time I meet with someone? How much more valuable am I? If they were to meet with me and then they go meet with another agent, is there a clear distinction between who's more valuable and what I can do for that client, right? So that's where value proposition starts coming into play. Um, and it's kind of thinking of, of, of your business as a service, right? Let me give you an example. Uh, what's a common service that someone uh, uses in their everyday life? Who can give me an example? What's a common service you Netflix, do in your everyday life? Hulu, Disney. So your streaming services, right? Your streaming services. What about other services that you use like personal services where you go out and like someone helps you do something barber barber perfect barber um okay miles on our team is a barber there's the car wash right car wash it's a service provided by someone we're in the service industry right so you guys all understand that we're in the service industry we're individual agents we're independent contractors and we service uh, people but what happens is as more and more people enter the marketplace, as there's more agents and more agents coming in the marketplace, clients a lot of times see us more as a commodity, right? And a commodity is like something you could just go out and get anywhere, right? It's like, it's like a common thing like milk or, or cheese or something, right? It's like there's an endless supply. So you, as you get better in your sales skills 
and you approach your sales strategy with more of a value-based strategy, then you start pushing yourself away from just looking like any old realtor, right? The same thing like with Barber. One of you guys said Barber. Are there barbers that charge less and barbers that charge more? Right? I know for me, like if I want to go get a haircut, I could probably go down the street and get like a $10 or $15 haircut. Right? And then I know like the barber that I go to, like I pay them 50, 60 bucks to get a haircut. Right? But it's a different experience, right? It's a different experience, even though it's they're using the same tools right a lot of times they're it's the same uh you know barbering tools or they're using their shears or their clippers is it really depends on what the value is that i see in that person right and with real estate a lot of times because there's so many agents out there a lot of clients see real all realtors is just like another another realtor oh you're a realtor yeah my boy's a realtor yeah my boy's a realtor and when everyone sees you as the same then it goes back to who's the cheapest one Right. So like my barber, like if I didn't see him any different and he's charging me 60 bucks and I know I can go down the street and pay 10 and I didn't see him as any different than the other lady paying, you know, 10. I'd rather go to the $10 one. Right. It's just common sense. But if my barber has a different service that he offers or he's built a different value with me, then I'm willing to go pay him the extra money because there's a higher value proposition in my barber. The same thing like when you go to, uh, you know, Target or Macy's and you go to like uh, Nordstrom or Bloomingdale's. Is it a different experience? But a lot of times, is it the same clothes that they sell? Like at Macy's, can you get a pair of Levi's? And then at Nordstrom, can you get a pair of Levi's? Right. They sell a lot of the same things. There may be some exclusives to that, that store, but at Nordstrom, it's a different service, right? It has a different perceived value. It's like a little more exclusive. It's in the nicer mall. Um, when they give you your bag and you pay at the counter, they walk around and they hand you your bag, right? They get you a fitting room. You can get your clothes tailored there. When you go to Macy's, it's like you can't even find someone that's willing to help you there. Like I went to Macy's like a, a couple of weeks ago before I went to Cabo and it was like the wild, wild west. There was just like clothes everywhere and I had to go dig through stuff. And like, there wasn't no one at the fitting room. It's just like, you let yourself in the fitting room, you know? And there's like, there was piles and piles of clothes in the fitting room, like just stacked right there. Like stuff that people didn't wear. Um, the guy like that helped me at the register, like nothing against him but it was just like a young guy like didn't really greet me didn't say what's up didn't really ask me how my day was going anything like that just pretty much rang me up and like gave me a good kick on the ass and I was out the way right <laughs> but who's gone who's gone to Nordstrom who can tell me like, what their experience was like at Nordstrom or a Bloomingdale's or like a higher end like clothing store as compared to Macy's. I know when I would buy like nice coats, like there was a guy that I would always go to in the men's department. And uh, like, dude, that guy was like on it. Like he would sit there and he would try stuff on and he would look at me and then he would tell me like, nah, man, that makes you look fat. Yeah, actually that's a better cut on you. That, that slims you down, that, that uh, accentuates your shoulders a little bit. Yeah, that's a little too much padding right here. We probably gonna wanna take that out. Yeah, that's a little bit long for you, man. Like you probably let me find you a shorter one. You know what I mean? Um, and then he would find the right pants and then he would say, hey, like, let's figure out a tie for you, you know, and a handkerchief that matches. And then he'd say, hey, we're going to have to get this tailored, man. You like, you want this to look like, you want to look sharp, right? You want to look like professional, you know, let's get this tailored. I'll get it tailored for you. Can you pick it up tomorrow? And I even one time forgot the belt that I bought there. He literally drove to the office and dropped off my belt. Because I just bought like a Hugo Boss freaking coat from him. I bought a freaking tie. I bought, you know, I bought a whole, a whole fit. I think I was going to like an event or something and I forgot the belt that he helped me pick out. And he's like, hey bro, you know, you forgot your belt. You're gonna need that. Let me know when you're, you'll be in your office. You know, it's not a big deal. I'll drive over there and I'll give you your belt. Could I have gotten that 
same coat online? Could I have went and shopped somewhere else? Could I have maybe just, you know, whatever I, I could have, right? But it was worth the extra service. It was worth paying a little bit more. It was the experience and all, it was all that good stuff, right? And that's why when, I, when I'm going to buy something nice like that, I'd rather go to a Nordstrom than go try to like figure it out on my own somewhere else. So when you're able to give more value to a consumer and you have more of a value-based selling proposition, right? A strategy, you are able to charge more. You are able to get more people to meet with you. You are able to get um, less people to question you, right? When it's time to give them like, you know, information and stuff like that. They're not haggling you. They're not asking for money back. Like who's, who's ever had a buyer that's asking them for commission back? Right? And a lot of times they're asking you for commission back because they just see you as another commodity. Right? Well, hey. That other guy said he would do it. They said they would do it. So if you don't do it, I'll go with someone else. But if they really saw you as someone who was better or someone who was going to get them a better result or someone who was going to give them better service or solve some of the problems that they have, your chances of, of not having to give up that commission or not having to go down that route, you know, become less and less and less, right? There's no guarantees, right? But we're talking about how to get better, how to get better, how to get better, how to convert at a higher level. So it starts with being able to formulate your offer. So we're gonna watch a quick video. I'm just gonna go to a few minutes of this video. It's a guy, it's by a guy named Alex Hormozzi. Anybody heard of Alex Hormozzi? Um, this guy's super dope uh, entrepreneur dude, but really, really good marketer, uh, really understands how to explain stuff and break it down. And he talks about formulating an offer and he talks about formulating an offer uh, for like, he gives an example of like a weight loss company. He used to run gyms and stuff, but this can translate easily into our business. So I want to share this with you. And I highly recommend like if you're into this stuff and figuring out how you can be a better business person, you buy some of his books. I'm listening to his audio book right now, hundred million dollar offer. Um, fire. Like for those of you guys that want to be in business and take your business to the next level, super fire. So let me share this real quick. Um, and this is, he has a free training course on his website where he goes and breaks all of this down. These are, it's free. So let me know if you guys can hear this. Give me a thumbs up. Dollar people. And so uh, this is just can my favorite gift to you because I just want everyone to be wealthy. So let's rock and roll. So creating the grand same offer. All right. So there, once you, uh, once you know that you're in the right market, you're charging, you've, you've broken your beliefs around pricing, you understand how to, how to deconstruct and recreate value. Now it's time to actually put this piece together and figure out the outcomes that our, our clients are going to have, the problems and, and how we're going to solve them. All right. So let's dive in. So offer component number four is building your offer part one. All right, so the offer might not be converting because what you're offering is not solving their actual problems. All right, so this is one of the key points where people will market that they're solving a problem, but they're not actually solving the problem with the way that they're providing their fulfillment, their, their delivery. All right, and so this is this is the process that I break down when I'm working with uh, you know one of our one of our portfolio companies is identify the dream outcome that their prospects want. All right, then we list out all the perceived problems. This is important. It's not just their problems; it's their perceived problems that are going to come up, and then we're going to turn all those problems into solution sets that we're going to solve every single one of them which basically it eliminates all ways of failure for, for our client. And then part two is going to be packaging that into a delivery system. All right. So let's rock in number one. All right. Identify dream outcome. So remember this little, this little graphic I had before about the dream outcome. So the idea here is that here's the time period between where they are and where they are, where they want to be. We want to make this as easy as possible for this gap. We want this, the outcome to be as specific as humanly possible, which is this, this lovely uh, purple arrow up here. And, the, the sentence that you have to think about it is, you know, X, X specific outcome in Y, Y time period without biggest pain or fear, right? And so this is how we're really deconstructing the value. So we have to think, this is the value that they want. They want to lose 20 pounds in six weeks without any risk, right? Or without having to give up the things that they love, right? So this is very specific for this. Now, we, you might also even add the avatar, which you have seen some of my other stuff. Like I help, you know, you know moms uh, with over three kids, you know, lose weight within six months without having to go to the gym or, or change what their family's eating. Ah, okay. Well, that's going to be really, or, you know, without, without extra trips to the grocery store, right. Or whatever their biggest pain is. And this is why sometimes it's useful to be the prospect. So one of the, the best things that a lot of entrepreneurs do, uh, an easy recipe for success is solving problems that you've already solved for yourself, which is a classic entrepreneurial journey is usually we suffer with something. 
we're plagued by it. We have the desire to solve our own problem. We solve it. And then we see other people just like us who are struggling the same way. We're down near the bottom of, of, our, of, the, of the pyramid and they want to be at the top. And we say, hey, I can help you do it because I've already done it, right? And if you think about like for me, my entrepreneurial career was first, I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to get in shape. I got in shape. From there, people started asking me how I got in shape. So literally people started paying me to help them. And it was weird because I didn't, I wasn't even trying to, to make a business out of it. And then from there, I started a business, you know, helping people get in shape. And then from there, all the people who are helping people get in shape, right? Other trainers, uh, you know, gym owners were like, hey man, how are you building such a, a good business here? Because in the beginning I was making money, right? And so then I had to figure out how to make money doing that one thing. And so then I was like, okay, well now I just figured out my problem of making my gyms. I had six of them. And so I helped started helping other gyms. And then from there, the next level was there was all these businesses that had licensing products and, and education and niche consulting businesses. So they came to me and they're like, hey, how did you build, you know, gym launch to be as big as it was, right? And so then we started helping those guys out. And so it's, it's, it's this continuously iterative process of you solve a problem and do so, so well that other people notice it. And then what happens eventually is that people will always ask you for help. And so that is the easiest entrepreneurial journey. Obviously, you can always just identify markets and go after them. Um, but I think if you're, especially if you're starting out, um, and that is one of the easiest recipes for success. All right. So identify the dream outcome is number one. So we have to know what we're actually solving. That's obvious, right? We have to clarify what is the thing we're actually going to solve. And right now, if you don't even know what that is, then you need to write this out because if you can't clearly articulate it, then, then I can help anyone. So like for me with acquisition.com, me identifying the problem is I'm helping three to $10 million at minimum companies get to $30 million plus an exit in three to five years. Right. And so, and they can do that without messing up. Right. That's, that's the dream outcome that I'm helping a very specific avatar achieve a very specific result in a, in a, in a time period, three to five years. Right. Um, and, and, and to decrease their perceived likelihood of risk, it's like, well, I've already done this, you know, four or five times. So we're, we're really you know, we're pretty good at it. All right. And so that is the idea. All right. So second is list out all the perceived problems. All right. So what are the things that are preventing them from getting to where they want to go? Right. You have to think about this. What are all the things that you struggled with? on your process, in your, in, your, in your journey, right? And so I like to think about this in a couple ways. So one is, what is every single intricate step they're going to have? Guys, as you're listening to this, he's talking about the analogy of someone like losing weight or a gym, but I want you to think of the analogy of someone in your business, your buyers or your sellers. What are the problems that they face, right? So think of everything he's talking about in terms of your real estate business have to do or take in order to see success with your product, right? And so if I'm using weight loss as an example, because it's a simple one and everyone understands it, obviously I like one fifth of my, of my portfolio is, is even fitness related. I just like it because everyone gets it, which is one is like, what is, what do they have to do? They have to go grocery shopping and then they have to pack and unpack the food and then they're gonna have to cook the food. And then once they cook the food, they're gonna have to prep it up and divide it into little boxes. And after that, they're gonna have to eat the food, right? And then from there, they're gonna have to clean their dishes from cooking and from eating the food. And then they also have to feed their family. And then they're also gonna eat out. And so there's all these problems that get in the way and these intricate steps, step by step by step that someone has to do in order to be successful when they change the way they eat, right? And so each of these issues has flavors of problems, right? So if you think about this, like each one of those is one problem, all right? And so each problem has multiple components to it, right? Which is what, which for us as entrepreneurs is beautiful because it gives us endless opportunity to solve problems because that's fundamentally what we do. We solve problems. That's what entrepreneurs are, is problem solvers, all right? And so if you took the value equation that I talked about before, right, and you reverse that, right? When they say, grocery shopping is my problem, they're thinking multiple things are the problem. And this is where understanding nuances of language and thought patterns is important, right? One, they're gonna say, it's not worth it, right? It's not worth me going and doing grocery shopping stuff. And that's, that is a function of dream outcome. This is not gonna be financially worth it for me. The outcome is not worth it, right? The second would be around likelihood of achievement. They're gonna say things like, it won't work for me specifically. I won't be able to stick with it. It's too far, there's too many stores. These are all excuses for a likelihood of achievement, right? So our goal is how can we reverse each of these things? How can we say, I do, it is going to work for you specifically. I, you will be able to stick with it because of these things that we've done to take into account of that. External factors will get in my way, which is one of the most specific, uh, one of the most uh, unique and service specific problems uh, that will be specific to your service. Like if you're selling beauty stuff or you're selling, you know, uh, how to build, build a business model, or how to market or whatever it is, understanding the external factors that are getting in the way is going to be the most unique part of this. But the remainder of these are actually fairly common across all services. All right. So the third thing, let's say, we're, remember, we're just talking about grocery shopping here, is they're going to say, you know what, it's going to be too hard, it's going to be too confusing, it won't be enjoyable, and I'm going to be bad at it, all right? So think about all these appraisals. These are the thoughts that your prospects are thinking right now, all right? And so that is a function of effort and sacrifice, right? They're thinking this is going to be a lot of effort and sacrifice. And so what we're trying to do is for each of these, how can I make it easy? 
right? How can I make it simple to understand? How can I make it fun? How can I gamify this? And how can I make them feel like they're actually good at it, right? These are all things that we can change in their perceptions based on how we communicate to them, all right? And then four is going to be a function of time, right? It's going to take too long for me to do this. It won't be convenient for me. The outcome will take too long, all right? Which is a key point here, all right? So each of these one problems because I listed a huge amount of problems on the first page. I said grocery list. I said, I said grocery shopping. I said meal prep. I said eating out. There's all these problems, but for each of them, they're going to think about the four factors of value. And so the beautiful part about this is that this gives you gives us as entrepreneurs so many opportunities to solve problems and provide value, which is the point. So compare compare what we're, we're talking about right now and all of these different things. Hopefully your mind should be racing with, uh, with ways that you're currently not solving problems that you can. And by doing this, you'll be able to position yourself in a way that no one else is positioned in the marketplace, right? Because you're going to solve all these problems that no one else even talks about. And by doing so, you will show that you will understand your prospects problems better than anyone else. They will feel understood. And as a result, increase their conviction, the likely that they think that you will be able to solve their problem. That's the idea. All right. So. All right, I'm gonna stop right there because this the it gets pretty deep on it. You guys, I'll send, I'll give you guys a link if you want to go watch this. Um, it's it's really really good stuff. But the biggest takeaway, guys, that I hopefully you see here is the way he really broke it down. Right, he really broke down the fact that every client in that scenario, he was talking about weight loss and stuff like that. There's a perceived set of problems. There's issues. There's problems. Right. And what happens is a lot of salespeople, they just go sell a product, but they don't really talk about what the problems are, right? They don't talk about the problems in their presentation, in their marketing. They more talk about like, hey, this is what I do, or like, look at me, or this is how many homes I sold, or whatever it might be. They don't really say, hey, most buyers that I meet with, the number one problem they have is this. And this is how we solve that problem. This is why you work with us because. This is one of the problems that we solve. So now are we solving problems for people? Yeah, we are, right? We're solving a lot of the problems, but what happens is a lot of the time we're not explaining or articulating the problems that we solve. That's the big differentiator there, right? There's one thing like, okay, this is what we do. And like, yeah, we help people buy homes and sell homes and stuff like that. But if you're not able to break down the presentation or your marketing or how you talk to someone in a way that says, hey, let's identify the problems and let's show you why we're the person that's going to solve the problem. If that's never even brought up in the conversation, then a lot of the times the client is really just comparing you to the other realtor, right? Because you're no different than most realtors, right? If you're not speaking a different language or you're not positioning yourself any different, then they all sound the same. Right. So that's the key concept we got to take away from there is we need to really approach this with the strategy. Like if we want to get better at conversion and if we want to close more sales and we want to be able to charge more and we want to want to be able to earn our commission and keep more of our commission and stuff like that, we need to be able to position ourselves as problem solvers. That's the higher level for a lot of you guys. So I'm going to go through this worksheet real quick and we're going to kind of run through this together. Um, and get some interaction from you guys. Okay, I always like to start off with mindset, right? I kind of already talked about this a little bit, but how to increase your value with better offers, right? So the mindset, why increased value is important, right? Because if you don't think this is important, you're not gonna pay attention. That's just the bottom line, right? So we, we got to start off with the mindset. We talked about commodity-based versus value-based selling, right? Like if everyone just looks at you as Macy's and they just can go in there and like, you know, you can help them buy a home. And they just look at, they look at you as just any other store or any other agent. They're always going to want to go with the agent who is cheaper or who gives them a bigger discount or who gives them money back, right? Or who charges less commission and stuff like that. Versus if you're able to position yourself and explain yourself in terms of all the value that you offer and what problems you solve, then you're separating yourself from the competition, right? To where they look at you in a different manner. They look at you as Nordstrom's, they look at you as an experience, and therefore they're willing to pay more. The same way I pay more for my barber, 
right? Because I know when I go there, like I got a relationship with this guy. He's referred me clients. He's referred me agents that, you know, on our team. Um, we've done promotion, promotional stuff together, marketing together. He tags me on social media. Like there's all kinds of stuff, you know, on, on why he's more valuable and why I'm willing to pay him more money to go get a haircut that I could probably get for a little cheaper. And he, and he does a really good job of cutting hair. He's a master barber, right? Now, number two, bullet point number two is you're already doing the work. Like when you go meet with the client, you're already meeting with the client. Whether you do it this way or whether you just do it the way everyone else does it, you're already out there doing the work anyways. So why not take a higher level approach since you're already going to meet with this client and you're going to do a presentation anyways, or you're already going to you know, jump on the phones and book appointments and you're already going to talk to people anyways, why not do it at a higher level so that you get a better result, right? You're already out there. And it's not like I'm asking you to do something completely different. I'm asking you to enhance what you're already doing, right? And then the bottom line right here is more value equals more conversion, which equals higher commissions, right? And I, I wrote down appointment met versus signed and closed. And I'm going to stop right there. Um, think about this, right? Like if you book 10 appointments and let's say you meet with 10 people in a month, and out of those 10, you're only signing up one or two because you're not really taking your sales to the high level, right? You book 10, you met, you met with 10 or whatever. You probably booked more and then you know, certain people show up. But let's say you met with 10 people, 10 face-to-face, -face, whether it's a showing, whether you, it's a buyer consult, whatever it might be, 10 appointments that you met with. And you're only signing up two to work with you. That's a 20% conversion rate, right? 20%, two out of the 10. But what if like you started implementing these more thoughtful strategies and you started really approaching your sales different and you started really, you know, figuring out how to articulate your value. And now when you meet with 10 people, you're getting six of them to work with you. The same 10 that you already would have met with, right? And now six of them work with you. Six of them saw your value. And those six, you know, you were able to charge your commission if they were a listing. They weren't asking for money back, stuff like that. What does that do to your numbers? Right? Through the roof. 60% conversion is a lot better than 20% conversion, right? And then you can do the math on it, right? If each, if each client I meet with, if I make an average, and just as an example, $10,000 in commission, that's $20,000 if I close two. That's $60,000 if I close six. So you can do the math really easy, right? And you can do the math for whatever your average sales price is and commission splits and all that. And you can say, hey, there is a benefit to being a better salesperson and being able to articulate my value even better, right? So that's the mindset behind it, right? Why is it important? Why is what I'm talking about today important? Because ultimately it means more dollars in your pocket. That's ultimately what it means. Okay, so how are we going to get there, right? Like Enrique, Enrique, also, I mean, giving that giving that client experience, right? Giving them that higher level experience also gives you referrals, right? Not just on that particular client, you're going to see the benefit, but also on, on the referrals you get from it. Oh yeah, for sure. Like right now, we're only talking about the first layer, the first dimension. There's like three dimensions after that, right? There's like, you know, can you charge more? Let's say, let's say you were doing listings, right? And before you can only get away with charging 5% just because every time you met with someone, they would negotiate with you, you'd end up at 5%, right? But now every time you meet with someone, like you're so valuable, you're charging six and a half percent and you're getting it every time. Because like the way you do your presentation, the way you break it down, the way you, you know, articulate everything, you're charging one and a half percent more on each client, right? That's layer number two. And then from each client, you're getting a referral, right? That's layer number three. And then and then that client's coming back to you in three or four years to buy another property. That's so you can start compounding this thing right now. What we're talking about is just the first level of just the clients you meet with and getting them to convert. It goes on and on and on and it compounds, right? Like it's exponential. So this stuff, like the more you get this stuff down, like it it'll take your whole business and, and career and income to a whole nother level. Um, but thanks for pointing that out, bro. Cause that's, that's, that's now going deeper with it. For the sake of this presentation, we're going to like scratch the surface, but surely this is something that we can continue to dig deep, deep on. 
Um, but what I want you to leave with here is I want you to now leave with the mindset shift that you got to get better in, in your presentation. You got to get better. You got to think of it from a problem and solution standpoint versus like just meeting with the client, just doing the buyer, you know, going to show homes, writing the offer. You have to be able to start like speaking this sort of language. So, and you'll, you'll see over time, the results that you start getting, right? This is the domino, right? The first domino that starts knocking the other dominoes over. Um, okay, let me go back to my shared screen. So we're gonna work through this a little bit and I, this is where I need your guys' help. What are the top five problems, right? So this is like what he did in his example, right? Is he started identifying the problems, right? First, he identified the dream outcome. We know the dream outcome for a buyer or seller. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that in. Your dream outcome. I think this is important, even though it's like obvious, some of you guys are gonna say obvious answers. Uh, like your dream outcome for a buyer is what? What's the dream outcome for a buyer? Put it in the chat. I wanna, I wanna see who's thinking where I'm thinking right now. The obvious answer, right, is buy a home, right? The dream outcome for a buyer is buy a home. But what is the way that they want to buy the home? In what manner? What sort of experience, right? So the dream outcome for a buyer Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add this uh, chart. So your dream outcome for a buyer, I see uh, obviously ownership. Right, ownership, but then also a smooth transaction, right? Some of you guys said a smooth transaction, smooth process. Uh, some of you guys said, the best deal, right? Smooth purchase, good deal, quick close, smooth transparent process, needs were exceeded, right? I'll say five-star service, something like that. Right, but those kind of boil it down, right? Like the dream outcome is someone buys a home and they feel educated, it was a smooth deal, they got a really good deal on the home, they found their, their dream home and it was a really good service and a really good experience, right? Like ultimately that is like the, the dream outcome that every buyer would want, right? What about for a seller? Write that in the chat, what's the dream outcome for a seller? Top dollar, right? That's probably the number one. When someone sells, it's because they want the money, right? Top dollar is obviously at the top of the list. Smooth process, right? Because selling a home can be stressful. So they want a smooth process. What about getting it sold quickly, right? The fastest possible, right? No one wants to have their home on the market for 180 days. So it's going to be like the most money the best process and the fastest sale. Fastest sale, best terms, right? It pretty much all kind of boils down around that, right? Best terms, the fastest sale, the smoothest process, best service, right? Smooth process and good service is, is kind of hand in hand and the most money. Okay. 
So it's important that we understand this, right? When we meet with clients, like we understand that's the goal. But the question I got to ask you guys is when you are talking to people, are you talking about all those things in the, in the appointment? Are you like physically saying like, hey, my job is to do this, one, two, and three. Some of you are, some of you may not, right? Um, some of you are just saying, hey, I'm going to help you sell your home, but you're not going further and saying, hey, I want to make sure I sell your home and get you the best, the best terms, the best price, give you the smoothest process, make sure you inform, give you five-star service, right? Some of us are leaving that part out of it, right? And this is where we're, we're getting your eyes open on why you need to step up your game, right? Now, let's talk about the problems. What are the top five problems that buyers and sellers face today? For buyers, what are buyers facing today? Top five problems. High interest rates, do we wrote? Lack of clarity, low inventory, prices are too high. So top five problems, right? Low inventory, right? Um, uninformed, right? Like they weren't informed. They don't know what they're doing. It's their first time buying. Like they, their lack of clarity, right? No one, like they didn't explain it to them. There's a lot of buyers that meet with agents and they don't do a buyer consultation. They're going into a lot of this stuff blind, right? So low inventory, lack of clarity, right? Um, higher price, higher prices, right? Compared to before, or also in terms of the interest rate, right? If the interest rates are higher, then it's costing more. So it's higher costs basically, right? And that could be uh, rates and prices depending on the neighborhood. What about service, right? Are there buyers out there who are getting shitty service by other agents? Bad service. Service. And then uncertainty. Uncertainty in the market, right? Those are probably the most common ones right now, right? Uncertainty in the market right now. They don't know if it's a good time to buy or sell. You know, they might go get bad service if they, if they team up with the wrong agent or wrong team. Uh, the costs are higher because the rates and stuff like that. And depending on the neighborhood, the prices, not lack of clarity, right? Or they're not uninformed. You know, they're not being informed. Low inventory, right? Competition. That's what they face. Although that's, you know, that has gotten a little bit better, but it's still relatively competitive. But those are the most common problems, right? That buyers face. Now, what about for sellers? What are the problems sellers are facing today? Some of the same ones, right? Lower sales price. Right, lower sales prices, days on market, right? No offers, bad service, same thing, right? Like they can get bad service by an agent. And also uncertainty as well, right? Like they don't know if it's a good time to sell. Are they making the right choice? Bad service, lack of knowledge. So a lot of them are the same and there's gonna be a few that are specific whether you're on the buying or selling side, right? But here's the big takeaway guys that I want you to see is that these problems right here are gonna exist all the time. Like it doesn't matter where the market's at. It like some, there may be one that changes up or down. Like 
if we had too much inventory, then that'd be, a, that'd be different, right? Too much inventory, too many homes to choose from, right? But most of the time, it's like lack of clarity, bad service, uncertainty, right? Like there's the most common problems that people face when they're buying or selling a home that we got to navigate through. So then the question becomes, when you are speaking to people, are you articulating how you're the person that's gonna help solve these problems? Are you even talking about the problems? Like, hey, Mr. Seller, like these are the most common problems right now that clients are facing. One, two, three, four, five. This is what our team does to make sure that you get the best possible price for your home. This is what our team does to make sure your home sells the fastest because right now many sellers are facing higher days on market. This is what our team does to ensure that you get the most offers on your home. This is what our team does to make sure you're informed and you have the best service possible. This is what, you know, although the, the markets, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, this is what we do to make sure you're well informed and you know whether it's the best time for you to buy or sell right now. So do you see what I'm getting at, guys? It's, it's as simple as just saying it in those ways and incorporating that into your process, into your pitch, into your presentation, into your sales phone calls, right? Into your open house interactions. When you go out and show homes, you talk about this stuff, right? Most agents... 99% of the agents, they don't discuss this stuff. Although they may do some of these things. So doing it and then saying it is two different things. Doing something and then making sure the, the client understands that you do this and why you're more valuable. That's where the marketing and the dialogue and all that comes in. That's the big differentiator. And that's what I want you guys to take away today. Because a lot of you guys, you know, once you're, you're in this business and you're up and running and you're, you're servicing clients at a high level, you're, doing, you're already doing all, a lot of those things. But you may not be spelling it out for them and showing them that you do those things. That's the big difference. You're not reminding them. You're not showing them in your presentation. You're not breaking it down for them. You're not articulating it. Right? And that's the difference between having your like marketing hat on and your sales strategy hat on versus just like going through the motions and, and just kind of another, another person on in the transaction. Enrique, remember what Isaac, when we, when we talked with Isaac on, on Friday, he used a term like it, that is needed, right? What, what was that term that he, did you remember what he wrote down? I think that's good to share. Yeah, it was a term. Um, I think I have it. So there's a, there's a basketball player who turned motivational speaker. Um, I did watch that video. It was actually really good. I watched it after. But anyways, there was this basketball player. I forgot his name, but he's now, he's now a big motivational speaker and like a coach. And, and he went into sales and everything. But he only lasted like three years in, in, in basketball. Like he became a pro. He was like in the top like 400 players in the world and in the pros. And then he, I think he got hurt. And, and then he had to get out of basketball. And then from there he had to get, he went into sales and stuff like that. But he made an analogy that he used to play with uh, John Stockton. Anybody know John Stockton is? Basketball player, just before your time. Really, really good basketball player. But anyways, um, yeah, it does not take all that, right? That was the quote, it doesn't take all that. And John Stockton went on to play for like so many years and he was like paid super well. And he like, his career was super long. And then he just decided just to, just to retire, you know, because he wanted to retire. Um, but he had this long career and, and he was, he was a really, uh, really high level player, but he was saying like John Stockton would go to the chiro chiropractor four times a day. He would like eat a certain way. He would wake up at a certain time. He would like do all these extra things. And the other guy, the guy that I'm talking about, right? He was like, man, like 
I'm a pro. Like I'm ranked top 400, whatever. Like I'm, I'm in the pros. Like I'm good. Like it doesn't take all that. It doesn't take all that. Right. And that was the whole thing. It was like, he was seeing what this other guy was doing and doing all these extra steps to preserve his body, to make sure he had the best overall health, to make sure he had longevity and all these things. And this guy, because he was already having some success, right? If you made it to the pros, you're already successful, right? In most people's terms, right? Um, and his, his whole thing was, it doesn't take all that, right? Like, I don't need to do all that. Like, I'm already here. And then three years later, he gets hurt. And boom, he's out of the NBA. And that's part of what he talks about now in his presentation is he's like, look, man, like, I was wrong, you know? Like I was like, I was, I had my ego, like I have made it to the NBA. I thought I was the shit. And then I see this player and I'm like, yeah, man, like I'm already here with you. Like, it doesn't take all that. You're doing all that extra stuff. You're going to chiropractor four times a day. Who does that? Right. Like, it doesn't take all that. Like put me in the game. Right. And then boom, he's out. And then he boils it down to like sales, right. Where there's certain people in sales, there's certain people on our team who do a lot a lot of extra things, right? They do things a certain way. They take the time. They go into the detail. They prepare. They show up early. They get dressed. They have their camera on, right? Some of you guys don't have your camera on right now, right? Like they do certain things because, and somebody else may be having some success. You may be closing some deals in your mind. You're like, that yeah, doesn't take all that. But it does. Right? But guess what? come three years from now, come five years from now, right? Come 10 years from now, like in your career, the person who's doing all these extra things, those are the person who are going to keep excelling every single year, year over year, getting better, getting better, getting better. And they're constantly growing and your business is going to plateau because you're not doing the extra things. You're not going the extra mile. You're not adding, you're not constantly growing. You're not constantly getting 1% better. You know, and that's the big takeaway for some of these things is like, yeah, you can go out there and depending on how hot the market is, like you may not have to do some of this stuff at, at certain points because the market's hot, people are going to buy anyways. But now we're seeing right now, as the market is starting to shift, we're seeing that it does take all that right now and it takes more, right? And it may, in six months from now, depending on where the market goes, it might take even more than what we're doing right now. So having that mentality is that I got to do what it takes and I got to constantly improve my game is what's going to always keep you at the forefront, right? Even right now, like with me, like I'm like, I'm studying, I'm, I'm like listening to audio books. I'm taking courses right now. And some of you guys may be like, oh, well, you're the team leader. You doesn't take all that. You already made it. Like I had, I talked to an agent and she was like, you already made it. You have this business. And I'm like, dude, like, no, like, I'm not stopping right here. Like, no, I'm just trying to be better than I was yesterday, you know? And like, this is the same stuff here, right? When the, these sales concepts of these little inches, right? We're fighting for inches. We're fighting for inches. These little things that we got to tweak to our game will start compounding over time. So, Hopefully you had a mindset shift today, but I want to take it a little step further. We've got a couple more minutes. How do you now implement all this, right? Because you, some, someone may be saying, yeah, great, Enrique, you made your point. Sounds great. Yeah, all right, it takes all that. Now, what do I do now, right? How do I take what you said and go put it out there into action? So you got to really go back and reverse engineer, right? We got to formulate our offer. We know what the problems are, right? I'm going to put this on this next page so you guys can see it a little bit better. And there's some things that we're already doing, but you may not be selling it in the way that emphasizes why that's important. Lack of inventory, competition, right? There's lack of inventory or there's low inventory. Or there's more competition right now in the market. What is the solution? How are we finding people more deals? What's the solution? Put it in the chat. How do we solve that problem?
If there's low inventory and that's an issue, right? What's a way that we can solve that issue? What's a solution to low inventory? Do we wrote it? Off-market deals, expires, cancels, FISBOS, but essentially it's find off-markets, right? That's really what it boils down to. Find off markets through our efforts, through our network, through all of these different things, right? And here's the thing is we say that it's part of our presentation, but sometimes we're just running through that part really quick. We're not explaining it in a way like, hey, Mr. Buyer, this is the most common problem we're seeing right now that buyers are facing. This is how we do it. This is how we solve that problem. And then go into detail and walk them through what you do every single day. Walk them through how you're connected with other agents. Walk them through top agent network. Walk them through your Vulcan system where you can call uh, Circle Prospect. Walk them through us you know, door knocking other uh, around our listings to find, identify other sellers in a particular neighborhood. Walking them through you know, FISBOs, like stuff like that, right? Sometimes we're just skimming through this part and we're not really emphasizing how we solve that problem. Lack of clarity, uninformed. How do we, how do we solve, how do we solve that? Put in the chat, how do we solve the problem of people not having clarity and being uninformed? Educate them, analysis, graph data, right? But it's really gonna boil down to our consultation, right? Our buyer presentation. And explaining why we do the buyer presentation, right? The emphasizing why it's important, emphasizing how one of the most common problems that people have when they're buying a home is they don't know what's happening. They're not informed. They don't know the process. There's, there's uncertainty, right? This is how we're able to solve that. It's not just the buyer presentation, but it's also once they're in the process, keeping them informed as well, right? So let's say in your business, you're like, hey, I do a weekly check-in with all my clients. I do a weekly phone call. Every single Friday, you're going to get a call from me. Even if I just spoke to you on Thursday, this is how I keep you informed. This is who else is on, on the email. This is, who I, this is who I have on my team. This is the status report that you get, right? But being able to explain this stuff, right? Higher cost, right? Interest rates are higher. How do we solve that problem? How do we solve the problem of higher costs, higher rates? So number one is we have an in-house lender, right? In-house lender where we can help them shop for the best rate. Number two is going to be create uh, credits, right? Creative terms. Bad service. How do we solve bad service? It kind of goes back to keeping in touch, explaining everything, right? Summarizing the whole entire thing. Give me one quick second. Jay, walk them through the other ones on this list real quick. Got it, guys. So again, 
for for the bad service, I, I would boil it down to the communication guys, just making sure that you're communicating with the clients, whether whether it's good news or bad news, you got to go ahead and make sure you give it to the clients. Um, and again, do we put in their follow up? What else you guys got? I know, especially on the mortgage side, you know, sometimes we kind of hesitate to communicate certain things to the client, but it's important to go ahead and keep them informed. You guys got anything else? Bad service, how to avoid bad service? Explain everything with detail. Yeah. How about the last one, guys? Uncertainty, right? You guys that are dealing with clients right now, buyers that are, they're feeling uncertain. What can we do? Right, I think it also goes back to just educating, educating the buyers on what's actually happening in the market. Right, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of noise out there, but just letting them know exactly what's happening with their scenario, letting them know what's happening with, with their particular area that they're looking to purchase in, right? Informing them of what their options are. Yeah, so education, sorry, I'm back, guys. I had a call, I think. Um, yeah, just informing them, Enrique, of what's going on in their market, right? Yeah, so here's the thing, guys, is this, a lot of these right here are going to apply to the sellers as well, right? There's some that we can easily transfer over. And there's going to be a few, a few other ones where it's going to boil down to like our marketing or preparation of the property and explaining those things like that. If you guys are selling homes, you already know what we do to solve these problems. But the big, like the big piece that needs to connect it all is how you package your offer, right? Because now that we have clarity on what it takes and, you know, and what we know and all that stuff, it's about packaging your offer now. How do you now articulate that to someone, right? We've identified the problems. We know what our solutions are. We know why we need to sell this way, but now how do we go out there and deploy this in the marketplace? And that's where it's going to be now reframing your style in which you do everything, right? From your marketing. So for example, like when you guys are making, um, you know, putting videos out and putting content out on social media, you need to now speaking in terms of problems that people face and how you solve them. Right. And you need to be voicing these. Like if I'm going to do a video, my video is going to be like, you know, Hey guys, a big problem that people are facing today when buying a home is there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. What our team does to, to, you know, get over that or to help people with uncertainty is this right. Or a lot of times we're noticing, you know, we talk to a lot of clients and they're just misinformed, right. Misinformed or they know they don't know what's happening. Right. This is what we do to solve that. Or, right, that's, so it can be now tailoring your marketing towards that, right? Reframing your marketing and speaking in terms of problem and solution. Give me like two more minutes, guys, and we're almost done. Um, it could be now your buyer presentation, right? So what, what I'm already thinking is I'm probably going to add a page in the buyer presentation that just lists the common problems so that you guys can now remember to talk about these, right? It, it could just be simple. It could just be the bullet points. What are the common problems buyers are facing today? Problem number one, problem number two, problem number three. And then now that's your opportunity to go over that, right? And explain how you solve that problem. So it's not like some big giant tweak we have to make. It's more of just, we got to focus on speaking this way, right? So a quick tweak to your presentation or to your, your consults, or even when you're on showings, right? is now you're starting to incorporate this type of language and this type of communication into that. 
And then what happens is the clients now start to see you as different from that other guy. They're like, yeah, I met with this other agent. He didn't talk about any of this. He was just like trying to see when I wanted to see homes and if I wanted to write an offer. That's the thing is there's a lot of agents who aren't formally trained on high level sales skills. They simply just go out there. Hey, let me show you home. Are you like this home? Let's write an offer, right? They're not going in depth and seeking to understand the client and figuring out the pain points and talking about the common problems and how they're going to be the solution. They're not taking the consultant, consultant approach or the advisor approach. It could even be adding things to your process, right? Like now changing things that you do in your process, because it's one thing to say like, Hey, a lot of clients complain that they don't hear from their agent or they're, they're not being checked in on. This is what I'm going to do, but then you got to actually follow through and do it. Right. So it could be now adding a step in your process where you're like, Hey, on Fridays at 10 AM, it's my check-in time. Every time I meet with the client, they already know this is how I run my business. Every Friday, they're going to get a call from me. Even if I just spoke to them on Thursday, this is just my check-in call. This is how I run my business, right? Or every Monday, whatever it might be. Maybe I start off the week with calling every single one of my clients just to check in. Hey, I know we're in contract. I know we're in escrow. I know we're just waiting on the, you know, the loan, but Remember when I met with you and I told you like, this is part of my guarantee to make sure that you, you are always informed and you're always, you always have me checking in with you. You know, this is my check-in call every Monday, expect a call from me around this time. So it's now adding steps into your process that you do that back that up. It's even things like the guarantee, right? Like the guarantee that we offer in our, in our uh, buyer presentation, right? The sell for free guarantee where in the first 12 months, if for some reason you don't like your home, We'll list it and we won't charge you the listing commission. All right? We won't charge your listing commission because we're backing up like our guarantee that we're going to find you the best home and the home that you like. So you got to start tailoring your communication style, your presentations, the way you market, the way you talk to people and coming from a position of value-based selling formulating offers, right? Like you're saying, hey, when you work with me, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get all these things. This is why you want to work with me. These are the problems that most people face. This is how I solve these problems. Versus like, hey, let's go show homes. Hey, let's write an offer on a house. Yeah, no, Enrique, I think, I think this is a great reminder, guys, of, of going back to the basics. Because again, I think sometimes if we've been doing this for so long, we will start skipping steps. And when we start skipping steps, that, that means we're not providing that clarity, that service, that five-star that five star uh, service, right? So we want to make sure we go back to the basics. And I think this is a great reminder of just understanding what are the problems that, that buyers and sellers are having? How can we create a, a great experience for them? And just boiling it down to those things and focusing on that and making it clear for them. Yeah, and, and the step further is how do you market that, right? How do you package it and present it? Because it's one thing like we now understand what the problems are and what we do, but then how do you now implement that into your sales? That's the part, right? That's the, that's the most crucial part, right? So yeah, we're going back to basics, but you now got to be able to add this to your arsenal and how you speak to people, right? And there has to be certain ways like you do things, right? So if, if someone's going to meet with Luis, right? Uh, Luis, he's been in the business for several years now. He's closed a lot of deals. At this point in his career, there needs to be certain things that Luis does with every single client, right? Like the Luis way of handling clients and giving them top level service and making sure he solves these problems. The Blanca way, the Dewey way, the Manny way, right? Like, what are your signature things when someone meets with you and someone works with you? Like, these are absolutely non-negotiable. This is how I run my business and how I service my clients. Right? Because what we give you guys here at the office, right? Like, we give you a lot of the foundational stuff, right? And it works. It's going to get you to a certain level. The buyer presentation, it, you know, but... What's the next, this is why this is a higher level conversation. Like, what are you now adding to that? That's unique to you. What's your signature thing that you do? 
I want you guys to start thinking about these things, right? Maybe it's the way, maybe it's a commitment that, hey, every time I meet with the client, I make sure I'm dressed up all the way. I make sure when I meet with the client, I'm dressed super professional. Like that's a standard in my business. I don't, a client will never see me dressed down. Or maybe it's a, it's every time I meet with the client, I show up 10 minutes early. Like that's how I do my business. If I'm, if I'm nine minutes early, I'm late. Or, or in my business every Monday, doesn't matter rain or shine. If I'm on vacation, I call my clients between one and three o'clock. I do a check-in with every single one of my clients every single Monday. Right. Or every single time I close a deal, I know PRG has closing gifts, but this is a gift that I add that's personal to me. I have a personal note. I have a personal thank you. I have something with my picture or I do a certain thing that's special to me because I want to make sure it's a memorable experience. This is now where you're now taking yourself to the next level, right? You're differentiating yourself. Or, hey, or I make sure I hit these points and I make sure I go deep on these or I make sure I ask this certain question on every single presentation because that's what's going to separate me from everyone else. All right, guys. That's all I got for you today. Do me a favor real quick. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, respond to my message. What was your biggest takeaway from today's training? And what will you implement immediately? So just hit reply, think about it real quick, hit reply to my message in Slack. What was your biggest takeaway? And then maybe what's something that you're like, I gotta start doing this, or I gotta start implementing this immediately. I'm sending it out right now, give me one sec. I'm reading some of these, identifying your dream outcome, develop an elevator pitch to help immediately differentiate yourself in the competition, showing your value, what makes you different. Really good stuff, Julia. And, and that's something also to think about. If someone were to ask you, what does make you different? Like what's different between you and the other guy at Intero who's been doing this for a long time, right? You gotta know what you're gonna say. You gotta, you gotta know what makes you really different and how to pitch that and present that. Like, hey, that's a great question. Here's what makes me different, right? The most common problems that most buyers today are facing are one, two, and three. What I do to solve these problems is I do this, I do that, I do that. That's why I'm different from most people. Most other agents, they don't even address these issues. They don't talk about this. Just imagine if you had that much confidence, right? Because you like studied this stuff and you really understood who you were and what your positioning was and your value. And someone could just come up to you, a stranger, and say, hey, what's the difference between you and Intero? Or what's the difference between you and this other agent who's been around for a long time? And you're able just to quickly like, boom, boom, boom. This is what I do. These are the most common problems people face. This is how I solve those problems. This is why more people choose me. This is why I have five, you know, this many five-star reviews. Like, and you can just confidently look someone in the eye and say that. Boom, that's where your business goes up. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thank you so much for today. Let me know if you need anything. See you later.